Welcome back, everyone. I'm Justin with Is It Scary Wisconsin, and I'm joined here tonight by one of my best friends, Gage. With seven whole years of haunt reviewing. Is that Maybe. wild, dude? Remember we, when yeah. we started this? 2018, I had my baby face. I had I face, was no fat. face. I was, I was fat. You were, and you've lost a lot of weight. Dude, we've came a long way, and for the better. <laughs> so... Tonight, for those of you who are not familiar with the way the Haunt Awards work, we give out a few awards based on things that we really liked at the haunted houses that we visited in Wisconsin this year. Before we start, we'd like to give a 2024 State of the Haunt Industry address. When I look back on previous years, I find myself quickly moving on to the next season and forgetting pretty much everything. But the one word that sticks in my head to describe our experience this year is wow. This season, there were so many breathtaking sights and holy crap moments. Where do I even begin? Gage, I see you nodding, and I'm glad to see I'm not the only one that feels that way. From the Scarlet Storm at Terror on the Fox, a haunt that blew me away with its performance this year, to excellent storytelling at Terror Shed and Green Bay Fear, an amazing performance at Bayport High's Music Mayhem, and a wild experience at haunted at Warriors Haunted Asylum and the Haunted Sawmill in Merrill, Wisconsin. Wow. Just wow. And that's just the tip of this iceberg. It's fun. Each year, going to the different haunts and experiencing different owners and actors' approach to management and haunting. The science behind these scenes and how they're built is one thing that absolutely fascinates me. How come that room scared me so much? Why did that loud noise make my heart flutter? Why did that particular scent make me stop in my tracks? This is some of my favorite things about haunted attractions. I love looking at how rooms flow and how scares are deployed to enhance each moment and experience in a haunted attraction. I've noticed a few haunts this year that deployed that floaty skeleton prop. Gage, you're familiar with this, of course. And it was interesting because both haunts used this prop differently but they got similar results. That really captivates my mind. 2024 was truly a special year that saw actor training and scare tactics come to the front of the line. Something I think we've needed in Wisconsin for quite some time. I do not remember an intensity like we saw this year, or even close for that matter, in years past. Also, I have noticed a higher number of actors and managers coming to the criticism in our videos with open arms and acceptance while using some of the things we point out as tools to better their shows and make improvements. This, this right here is what 50% of every single review we record is all about. It's great to see 
some of previously negative attitudes towards us shifting. Finally, we started giving out Scarret badges this year. What a difference these made to the four people who received them. You deserved it. Clap, 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 clap. You deserve it. Clap, 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 clap. Now, without further ado, let's get on to what you all came here for. The 2024 Wisconsin Haunt Awards, as presented by Is It Scary Wisconsin. And remember, if it ain't Is It Scary, it ain't shit. So we're going to start the show off with a category that I actually added this year. I think it's really, really important, and it's one that gets overlooked a lot. I want to talk about best overall theme in a haunted house. Now, Gage, you called me uh, while I was out tonight, and you asked me, what, what does... What do you mean, best overall theme? So to all the viewers at home, when we say best overall theme, what that means is based on your setting, based on your location, based on your sets, right? Uh, based on your monsters inside, your actors, your characters, who had the best overall theme where everything fit together and worked together is kind of what this category is for. Uh, Gage, would you like to go first, or would you like me to go first? I can go first on this one. What I had for best theme of 2024, my best theme was Terror on the Fox and their ship. I also want to, before I delve in, I want to make note that there will be possible repeats. I may say something, and Justin may say the very same thing as well. So just heads up, we don't talk about our haunts, our, our points beforehand, so... I chose Terror on the Fox because I love that aquatic beach ship theme because not only does the beach ship, it's unique, but it almost fits geo geographically. I, I can't say that word right, but you know what I'm talking about. Try it. Geographically. Geographically. It fits as Terror on the Fox takes place on the Fox River. So you can already picture a pirate ship beaching from the Fox River. It's actually believable. It really is. So that is what has what's taken my best theme of the year for 2024. Awesome. I do have a runner-up for my best theme. I want to give one to uh, Music Mayhem at Bayport with the zombie theme that they went with. They had a really cool outbreak event, and then every room you went into after that had zombies in it and so that was really good but again you know it's at a at a high school you know there's some things a little bit of stuff working against it. their music mayhem where's the music you know whatever okay but let's get into the 2024 best theme award of course i chose warriors haunted asylum every character every actor that we encountered in warriors haunted asylum was in theme they were a member of the asylum if you go to warriors haunted asylum you will see exactly what i'm talking about huge shout out to dan and the crew at warriors haunted asylum you guys deserve it best theme of 2024 from justin with is it scary gage this is a category, again, that I kind of added this year because otherwise it's, hey guys, Justin, my best friend Gage. Tonight we're talking about what haunt we thought did it good. What was the best scare of the year? Oh, this guy did this. What was the best haunt of the year? It was these guys. Good night, everybody. Have a great night. You know, and I just feel like there were more things that we could discuss this year, especially after basically looking back and going, man. It was a wild four weeks, dude. So let's talk about it. The biggest surprise of 2024. 
Now that could be a haunt that you went to, expected it to suck, and it was great. It could be a haunt that you expected to be great, and it sucked. Or it could be a haunt you didn't know what to expect, and you walked out going, I need to go again. So, hey, let's talk about it, Gage. Biggest surprise, 2024. How about you take the reins for the start in this one? Sure, I'll go first this time. My first runner-up is Burial Chamber. Normally, I have a relatively negative experience with Burial Chamber. I have a very, I don't know, back and forth past with them. I, I haven't been so loving towards them in years past. Anybody who's followed our channel for long enough knows that the Congo... I'm sorry, brother. I, I, I'm just letting y'all know. I have to convince him sometimes to come with me to Braille The Chamber. conga lines annoy mm -hmm. me. Um, that is just not scary for me. You know, whatever. But the experience I had this year, it really did feel like a total package. Start to finish. Several different events. The atmosphere was good. I mean, they ticked a lot of boxes. We had fun. And there were some good scares. Burial Chamber definitely redeemed itself for me this year. And they are runner-up for my biggest surprise of 2024. My second runner-up, I would be remiss if I didn't mention the Terror Shed. A very small, very humble home haunt in Kewaskam, Wisconsin. If you haven't visited the Terror Shed, I 100% recommend that you make the pilgrimage to do it. This is a show that takes very simple scare tactics and deploys them very, very effectively. I liked it. It's an instant classic. And it's a haunt I can't wait to go back to in about three years. They are my second runner-up for Biggest Surprise. And my 2024 selection for Biggest Surprise haunt, Haunted Attraction this year, Bayport Music Mayhem. Holy crap, was that a great show. As I was filling out my score sheet for them, I was trying to find points where they would lose. The only thing I could find was smashing my head on a low ceiling three times. That's the only place they lost any points. The actors were intense. The scenery was fantastic. The scares were good. And the scare acting was pro-level. For a high school haunt. Ultra impressive. And it has me hyped to go back again next year. I said this during our review. Bayport has now solidified themselves as a prime time player in the haunt industry in Wisconsin. And I really hope 2025 is as good as 2024. My selection for biggest surprise of 2024, Bayport's Music Mayhem. For my biggest surprise of 2024, <clears throat> my runner-up does has to be Terror Shed as well. I came into there thinking, okay, that's a shed. It's, a, it's about a 15 by 15 foot shed. Two rooms, three. Walk through it. We'll get the Warriors. Yeah. I shut up quick. <laughs> yeah. I shut up quick. Going through that place, it was definitely a pleasant surprise, albeit scary surprise. Scarily good. I had to have them as a runner-up. However... For my biggest surprise of 2024, really does also has to go to Bayport High School. I said in our review, we were joking about finding points to give them. We were joking about, 
oh, I bet there's going to be three scares there or two. Or, all right, well, we probably shouldn't care about well, this. No cue line actors, two points off, you know. Yeah, we, 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 we were flapping our gums. But they dropped as soon as we walked through that haunt because they hit nearly every single point. That just goes to show you, man, if you hit all those decent points, you're going to have a great haunt regardless of that performance. But here's the thing. That performance was sublime. So I had to give them the biggest surprise of 2024, echoing yours as well. One category that we haven't really done in the past and as I was kind of getting everything together tonight, I found myself wondering, how come we've never done this? Best cue line work. Um, and, you know, we go to so many different haunted attractions <laughs> that Sometimes you watch people work and you're like, okay, yep, I've seen this before. Yep, 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 yep. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Okay. But every once in a while, there's a scare crew and a cue line group that really impresses, that really does something different. And that's what this category is for. Gage, would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? Sure. I'll go first. For my best cue line work of 2024, has to go to the sawmill. Not only did they have that little, I'm going to take your word and say faux entertainment. I like that. I like that. It's, it feels really fancy. The faux entertainment. What you had a little mini walkthrough, mini haunted house corn maze or pallet maze, I mean, and then you had your little room there where you get to see the main attraction of the haunt. And I just, I thought, wow, when it really comes to queue line entertainment, Sawmill really takes it. They hit hard with the different bands that come out, different songs and such. Now, you know, that leads me to my runner up, which would have been I me, mean, which would have, which is Terror on the Fox, because they still had that similar, you know, faux uh, uh, performance and stuff. Uh, but not only that, seeing the Blood Queen not just like take on the entire line by herself that night that we went was definitely something to mention. So for my 2024 best Q line performance has to go to Haunted Sawmill. My runner up is also Terror on the Fox in that one. Yeah, you know what? I'll give a shout out to Tara on the Fox. I think they have some really awesome and stellar Q line work. My runner up this year, however, is Green Bay Fears' new story crew. And I completely the, forgot about that. Nice. And the line actors. Now, let me tell you what. This was a nice change of pace at Green Bay Fear. This was an injection of story. I haven't seen there in a while. Yeah, I'm kind of tired of hearing about Fierstein and the family and all this other crap. Eh, I'm bored of that. Give me something different. And they did. They put three of their top actors right out front and center. And yeah, sure, the voices are probably pre-recorded. In fact, I can almost guarantee it. But you have to understand there is an incredible level of focus that is required to do something like that, especially in front of a larger group of people. Very impressive. And while we're at it, I'll also shout out their line actors, their Q line actors this year. They were on a different level. And I mentioned that to you during the Green Bay Fear review this year, which if you guys haven't watched, you should um, I do think we highlight some things that they did better this year than they've done in many years past. And one of those things was cue line work and actor intensity. Runner up to Green Bay Fear. Best cue line work? I'm with you, Gage. I thought the Haunted Sawmill killed it. At first, when the music started and they started kind of fake playing along with it, I was like, oh, this is stupid. 
But then, you know, I had to remember, I'm at a haunted house. I should be suspending disbelief for this. I should be. Sure, the actors inside aren't going to actually kill me. You know, sure. Okay, so then why aren't I suspending disbelief for this? This dude's up here rocking out Thriller. We got Hot To Go going on. We got some other songs that I actually really liked. And it was a good... It was good. Now you put four or five of those people out in front of a thousand people doing a faux band performance. That takes guts. And lots of it. Really impressive to see him doing that. Really impressive to see him pull it off. And they nailed it. Huge shout out to 2024's unanimous, by the way. 2024's unanimous Q-line work. Best Q-line work. Haunted Sawmill in Merrill. I want to take just a very short, very, very short break from the awards here. To mention, we do have merch available in the description. Like this awesome Is It Scary Wisconsin metal plate on display behind me. That is just absolutely fantastic. Or like Gage's hoodie. Or my t-shirt. Hey, if you want to support the realest haunted house reviews in the state, check out the merch in the link in the description. Now, let's talk runner up for haunt of the year. Let's talk runners up for haunt of the year. Because I actually have a few. There were a few that when I was going through this, I found myself thinking, how am I not giving it to them? How am I not selecting this haunted attraction? Whether they surprised me, whether they gave an amazing show, or whether they just scared the crap out of me. There were several haunts this year that were neck and neck with not only each other, but with the winner. This is the closest I've ever come to telling Gage we need to have co-haunts of the year. However, at the end of the day, as I've said in previous videos, your haunted attraction must, must be scary. And that is what tipped the scales in the favor of the winner of Haunt of the Year this year. So Gage, without further ado, let's talk about some runner-ups for Haunt of the Year. Would you like me to go first, or would you like to go first? Okay. My first runner-up. Music Mayhem at Bayport High School. I've said it once, I'll say it once more. This was an incredible show, and they tied with the highest scoring haunted attraction this year. They tied with what I consider to be one of the two best shows I have ever seen in Wisconsin. They tied with Realm of Darkness. A lot of you may not understand how significant that is. That is a big deal. Runner-up, Haunt of the Year, Bayport High School's Music Mayhem. Additional runner-up, Haunted Sawmill and Merrill. This is the complete package event. Great Q-Line Entertainment. Food on site, fun atmosphere, welcoming atmosphere, 
and a haunted house that spans over 20 minutes with a multitude of scenes and an in-depth story outside the house if you want to delve in and read it online. Really impressed and a runner-up for Haunt of the Year. An additional runner-up for Haunt of the Year the realm of darkness. I love the realm of darkness. There is almost nothing in that attraction that I do not love. It is a fantastic, exciting, adrenaline-charged show from start to finish, from two haunters with very humble origins. If you are a haunted attraction connoisseur in Wisconsin and you do not visit the Realm of Darkness in Kakana each year, you are missing out. Gage, your runner-ups. My runner-up for Haunt I of the Year. I am so sorry. Nope, I don't have another one. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I thought you were about to tell me that I wasn't. Bit. You weren't my recording bit. my voice. Oh, I actually, I'm not. <laughs> that, to those who don't know, that's happened once. We've had to record a video yep. during again. the reven during the revenge review. I felt so stupid. <laughs> my runner-up for 2024 is the realm of darkness as well they are the best all-round show when it comes to the different themes that they could throw at you the different interactivity and nonetheless they were our haunt of the year winners of 2023 they really competed for 2024 this year but all i have to say is the realm of darkness I struggled with this one. And I just think the Realm of Darkness is a great haunt. And the go-to, as you said, if you're a haunt, haunted house connoisseur. Are you ready to talk about the haunt of the year? Oh, wait. Maybe we should delay that a little bit and talk about what we're hyped for for 2025. You know what's funny <laughs> is I'm pretty sure last year I said this same thing. <laughs> well, we've already confirmed it because we've already messaged them to tell them we're coming in 2025. My most hyped haunted attraction next year, provided that they're open, obviously, is Camp 5 Terror. Oh, is it my turn? Yeah. Why would I have a 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 runner up for most hyped part of the track? Oh no, 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 I thought you were gonna go on a whole, you know, detail thing. Well, about dude, it. here's the thing, right? So it's in Crivets, it's in the Northwoods. <laughs> it's it's a it's a it's a creepy setting back in the woods. You know, I mean I like that, dude. You got to love those trail yeah, ones. You know, and here's the thing, though, dude, right? The Haunted Voyage in Mishicot, same thing. Back in the woods, it's at an old camp. I mean, I like the setting naturally. So when I started doing my research on Camp 5 Terror, I'm like, yeah, daddy's going to like this one. Gives you those uh, Camp Crystal Lake vibes, you know? Mm, you yep. got me. Yep. Yep. <laughs> my most hyped Haunt for 2025 is Spooks on Spur. I am waiting for their redemption arc from last year. I that last year left a bad taste in my mouth only because it had a lot to do with the pacing and the fact that we caught a huge group. I am confident 2025 will be their redemption arc. They will come back and they'll come back swinging. And they will be scoring up there with Realm and Revenge. And 
maybe even Bayport High School. Yeah, I'm. If I had to do a runner up, Spooks on Spur would have been my runner up. But I'm, I'm looking forward to that one as well. But for me, Camp Five Terror. I said it last year too, I think, or maybe the year before. I don't remember. But yeah, Camp Five Terror and Spooks on Spur, two biggest hype haunts for next year. All right, Gage, we have two categories left. You ready to do the haunt of the year? Bro coin way. <laughs> hey, speaking of yeah. bro coin way, if you want a really spirited home haunt, Nightmare on Bro Coin Way is something you should visit each year. Mm -hmm. They load their front yard with different animatronics and props, and they have a cool little clown themed section, covered section that you can walk through. Feel free to look them up on Facebook, Nightmare on Bro Coin Way. Really, as really much, cool and really interesting. As much as Mulberry Farms is becoming a quick traditional go to for us during the fall season, Bro Coin Way has solidified themselves as a yeah. tradition for he and I, Justin yeah. and I, to visit every year. Absolutely. Absolutely. Without further ado, Justin. Now, is our haunt of the year unanimous? All right, on the, you already count, know on, it. on the count of three, say your favorite dinosaur. One, two, three. Velociraptor. Velociraptor. Did we just become best friends? <laughs> yep. All right. <laughs> the haunt of the year. I love that movie. For 2024, count of three. One, two, three. Revenge. Revenge. Haunt. Yep. Revenge Haunt is a haunted attraction newly relocated in Pulaski, Wisconsin. The reason that Revenge is winning Haunt of the Year is because it is without question the scariest haunted attraction I visited in 2024. It is, there is a certain way that they play with phobias. There is a certain way that they play with creeping you out, a sense of being uncomfortable, a at times claustrophobic sense, a at times sense of terror. There is a way that they play with that roller coaster effect where you're you're going up, you're going up, you're going up, you feel it building and building, and then when it's down, it doesn't stall, it doesn't slow tilt, it's straight down into the fiery pits of hell. Revenge Haunt this year was above all the other shows in terms of scares. I have been saying it since the beginning. And I don't apologize for this. The most important thing about your haunted attraction is that it is scary. When people often ask me, Gage, what haunt should I visit? I give them two. I give them two. Yeah, me too. I say Realm of Darkness, and I say Revenge. These are the only two. If you have, if you only have one night, yep. one night out of the entire month of October and early November, and you can only go to one haunt, hit either of those and I can tell you you will not be disappointed. Revenge the reason being they're my haunt of the year is that they are the epitome of fear. They are fear incarnate themselves. I feel like you're going to google the definition of epitome and don't worry Justin, I googled it and it works. Okay, I want you to <laughs> I want you to do I want you to pronounce it properly. Say oh it. my God! Now, I... Say it with me. You're fine. You're fine. 
epitome. Okay. Epitome? epitome? No epitome. way. Epitome. I've heard it called epitome. They're wrong. Epitome. Yeah, you sound right. Say, oh, no, no, say it. Say it. Say it. Epi epitome. Ep good, good job. Epitome. Good job. They are the Back epitome on track. of fear. A Epitome. I like epitome better because it sounds spookier. Yeah, you sound so cooler. I'm going to call it, it epitome. Actually, you actually sounded it, really cool. You should say it. It does like sound that. a lot better. I'm going to cool. say that and have everyone correct me and be like, no, I'm right. It came out of my mouth. Um, <laughs> You're welcome to the English dictionary. <laughs> unanimous. Yeah. Haunt of the year. Yeah. Revenge. Yeah, I actually had a lady in my place of business the other day. And she asked me, she was talking to me about haunted attractions because I was telling her that we were going to, um, we were going up to Merrill. And so we're talking and she says, well, I want to go with my friend to one. Which one should we go to? I said, well, you have two options. The best show is Realm of Darkness. I told her top to bottom, best show, no question. I said, if you want to be scared and you want in your face scares, uncomfortable, holy shit. You go to Revenge. I said, it's the best, it's the scariest haunt I've been to all year. And she said, that sounds really interesting. I told her, I said, you should go. I said, you should go through alone. It's even better. And so she comes in two days later with a smile on her face. And she says, so my friend and I went to Revenge. And I said, oh, you did? And she said, yeah. It was and I quote, Epitome. It was awesome, was what she said. I felt really good that I sent her to that I sent her to a haunt that she enjoyed. I said, was it scary? She's like, yeah. And I'm like, I'm glad you enjoyed your time. That made me very happy to hear. Yeah, uh, Revenge is definitely the scariest haunt we went to this year out of all the haunted attractions we went to. And the more I look at the list, the more I realize, oh my goodness, there were actually quite a few this year. Um, no question. Hands down, scariest show of the year. Haunt of the year this year, 2024, goes to Revenge Haunt in Pulaski. But viewers, don't go anywhere because we still have to talk about the actor of the year. Oh my goodness. Can't we just give everybody a participation trophy? We shouldn't single anybody out like that. That's not fair. That's not how we do things here. Yeah, you're right. All right. So for actor of the year. <laughs> Gage is dying. Um, would you like to start or would you like me to start? Sure, I can start this one. Actor of the year. This comes with runner-ups, obviously. So I'm going to name some runner-ups. My third runner-up is Jax from Revenge. Y you know, just go to Revenge and you'll see why. This man will fall. He will bleed. He has ridden a tricycle and, fall, I, and fell. I've seen that video. He will bleed for this role. He is committed. He is committed. He is my third runner-up. My second has to be Ethel at Burial Chamber. You can always see Ethel there. Whenever I go to Burial Chamber, I see Ethel. All right? Ethel is committed. Ethel is there to be not only entertainment, but also to give you that weird spooky factor. Ethel is never shy to take a photo. Ethel deserves to be my second runner-up. My first runner-up before I get to my actor of the year goes to Face-Off Guy from Revenge. Yeah, I don't I don't really want to go into detail because it freaks me out a little bit. Uh, go watch our other video if you want. Let's just say... He's called Face Off for a reason. Do you mean like that movie Face Off? Oh! My actor of the year or actress of the year goes to the Psych Ward girl 
at Realm of Darkness, our, I believe, your third time around, Justin, and my fourth. You know who you were. You were the one with the scissors on the bed acting all creepy. I thought you were going to stab me. I said, hey, the guy behind me is a good pincushion. Stab him. That would be on October 20th at 8.45 p.m. You know who you are. Congratulations for winning. Gages. Actress of the year. <laughs> okay, my sixth runner-up for actor of the year. This was an actor who showed incredible commitment to the product. Incredible commitment to the haunt. And puts forth more effort than most of us normies do in two weeks time in a single night. Chainsaw at Terror Shed. Very, very impressive. It takes a lot to run out there like that as many times as you do swinging a chainsaw around and to stay energetic all night long. That is impressive. My fifth runner up. Voice changer at burial chamber in front of Phobia. This was a nice touch. This was a nice way to break things up. And I really enjoyed the fact that instead of, I'm going to kill you, prepare to die. It was, stop, you violated the law. And it was fun video game Easter eggs to the point where at first I was like, is this person like weird? No offense. But then as I was listening, I was like, oh, they're only speaking in video game lines. This is good. Again, deep commitment to not only the character, but to the haunted attraction. I love it when I see this and I want to make sure that actor gets kudos. Very very well done. My fourth actor of the year runner-up is the actress in the psych ward on 1020 at 8.45 p.m. at Realm of Darkness. The way you moved, the expression on your face, everything about the way you ran that scene. That scene didn't run you. You ran that scene. Phenomenal. Some of the best work we saw this year. Excuse you? Congratulations. <laughs> My third runner-up. The Butcher at Warriors Haunted Asylum. I want to say I love how vague that was for the butcher. This is one of the actors we gave a scarab badge to this year. I thought you were a prop. I also thought I pissed my pants. Both happened in the same room. Your scare was stellar. Your work Fantastic. You deserve that scarab badge. Congratulations. My second actor of the year, runner up. Face off guy, revenge. This is the first time I've ever seen this. This is extraordinary. This is so different that when I first saw it, I was like, God, what the hell? And now every time I go, I just like, it's like a bad train wreck. Like you, you kind of got to rip your face away and stop looking at it. But you kind of want to watch him do it. Excellent actor work. Awesome commitment. And disgustingly terrifying. My number one runner-up for Actors of the Year. Everybody involved with the musical performances at the Haunted Sawmill. This was awesome. In my brain, I'm still thinking about turning around and seeing the whole group like dancing around with microphones and like singing 
to whatever song was on at the time. I still see it. Stellar performance. Amazing commitment. And it's awesome to see actors and actresses that aren't afraid to take those kind of risks in front of huge crowds. Actor of the Year 2024 is without question the butcher at Revenge. Now, I'm going to set the stage for why I chose this actor. I caught him off guard on the night we were reviewing. I'm halfway through the room, and they're walking back into the room. Ask me if I was disappointed. Ask me if this was a colossal letdown, because it was. I did everything short of grab this person by the collar and say, you were out of your effing position. I'm sure Tony wouldn't have cared. I did everything short of that. I literally made a fist and said, you missed your effing scare, bro. I walked out of the room. Scene's over. I walked down the hallway and I had an interaction with Texas Chainsaw. Went and saw Baphomet. Here's Gage and Jenna and Brienne on the stairs. Oh, it's so cute. Oh, my God. And here I am by the car. And honk, honk. Oh, God. This is so stupid. Like, come on. I'm just going to hang out here. I turned. And the butcher was in my face. I almost shit myself on the base of those stairs. I literally screamed, yes, that was awesome. It is so hard to recover from a botched scare in a haunted attraction. Any of my actors out there, you know what I'm talking about. If you've ever experienced it, there is a feeling of, and once it happens, you know it when it happens. Instead of giving up on the scare, this scare actor said, I'm not going to let them walk out of here disappointed. They literally followed me through the basement. And gave me one of the biggest scares in the last five years. I kid you not. They followed me up the stairs, grunting and screeching and growling at me. This is extraordinary actor work and revenge is absolutely lucky to have them working there actor of the year without question butcher from revenge Sorry, that concludes the 2024 season awards. I want to say, you go ahead, I see point in my phone. I want to say not only am I proud of the haunts 
and proud of the actors and actresses at these haunts, I'm also proud of us. I'm proud of how far Is It Scary has came through the past seven years, watching not only the haunts evolve, but us evolve in our rankings and our in our scorings, even in sense of maturities. I want you to go back and watch some videos back in 2018, 2019. This is me. This is me. Yeah, yeah, the fire. Yeah, um, yeah, they, they uh, uh, me. Um, uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, um, uh, um. And I also want to make note of how far physically Justin has came. We have matured very well. I am proud to see how far we've came, haunts came, and actors have came through the 2024 season, and I'm really excited to see what years to come. I also want to make note that just because this is the last video you're going to see for the 2024 season does not mean this is it for us and expect us coming in 2025. No, you're going to see some off-season content from us. We have some really fun ideas, plans for recordings like building a fantasy team, a fantasy haunt, almost like fantasy football, and our our signature reviewing reviews. We're going to call it fantasy haunting. I love that idea. Fantasy haunting. I will echo what you said, Gage. I feel like 2024 was literally the best year yet. Mm -hmm. haunts, and it only gets better. Haunts that we had minimum expectations for blew our mind. Haunts that we didn't know what to expect blew our mind. And haunts that we knew were going to be good and expected the world from blew our mind. If 2025 is this good, I mean, take me to it right now. That's how I feel. Can we press the skip button? Where's the skip button? I'll, I'll press it. I got to be honest with you. If it was an option, I would. Hot season is my favorite time of year. I love doing this with you. It's so much fun. I love doing it with you, man. I'm proud of you, too. Thank you so much for yeah. doing this with me. Yeah, and thank you for giving me uh, a platform to come out. And thank you for giving me the opportunity to kind of, like, expand a little bit when we do these reviews instead of just being very, you know, like, boxed mm -hmm. in. Like, only do this, then do this, then do then we're done, you know. Like, thank you for allowing me to flex a little bit this year and for allowing me to kind of spread the wings mm -hmm. a little bit on some of that stuff because I don't like restrictions and I, I appreciate you giving me the the opportunity to wax poetic on a few things, as they say. Thank for you. those who don't know, we have a very busy schedule during the October season. Yeah. We still have to work and that being on weekends. So we're not going to be able to go to haunts every single day and go to all these different haunts. But nonetheless, I want to thank you, the viewers. I want to thank you all, the haunt owners, the Can't actors. do it without you guys. We really couldn't. And not only that, you're spreading our name as we go. I'm I'm just very happy. I'm grateful for you all and for you all. And thank you so much for being part of our 2024 season. I am so looking forward to 2025. Excellent. At the end of the day, there are a lot of great haunts out there. Shout out to the runners up and a massive shout out to the haunt of the year winner, Revenge Haunt in Pulaski, Wisconsin. We are Is It Scary Wisconsin for all of your honest, straightforward haunted house reviews. And remember, if it ain't Is It Scary, it ain't shit. I'm Justin, joined by my best friend Gage. But at the end of the day, there is one question we have to ask. Is it scary, Wisconsin? Bye.